Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video and hope you guys are doing well today. Now, going to be doing a commentated ZA timed run. Uh, just go through, talk what we're going through, talk what our plan is, what we're doing, things to note and boss tactics, all that good stuff. So let's get into it. Now, I have sped it up just slightly, but um, yeah, I mean, you can see generally what we're doing. So this is obviously the cat version. Uh, we have a Discipline Priest, a Feral Druid Tank, a Unholy DK, Assassination Rogue, and an Elemental Shaman. Not necessarily the best comp, but I mean, everyone in here is absolutely stacked with gear, and we pump. So, happy days. So, we're going to go through to the first boss first, and that requires going through the Gauntlet. Now, the Gauntlet has, every pack will have one melee mob and one caster mob. The Windwalker will do lightning bolts and healing waves, or chain heals, I believe. And I don't think the melee mob does anything specifically, it just does a bit of damage. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to pull them together. We do periodically get eagles as well. Now, an add-on like DBM, especially when Cata Classic comes out, will likely tell you the spawn times of these. You want to be planning around them. They always spawn in the same place, so it can be either in front of you or behind you. You do want to make sure that you're trying to make pick them up before they all go and hit a healer. Now, this gauntlet stops when you pull this uh, NPC at the top of the stairs, which we are going to do with this pull. This is the, the Tempest. So we pulled it down. Once he dies, I believe we're going to get one more pack of eagles potentially. But yeah, I mean, it, all in all, it's going to fall over very, very quickly. Now, you can see I've actually committed to using a fire elemental during this. It's because we're moving. Uh, like the whole plan is to go at a fast pace. You can see the eagles just spawning now. So we're going to get them cleared before we go into the boss. And we're getting into the boss two or three minutes before we pull. Now, this boss has a couple of different mechanics. The first one is going to be a chain lightning effect that leaves a nature damage increase buff on you as well. You want to make sure you're trying to spread out here. Because we had two melee and obviously the tank, we decided to have the two melee stack on top of each other, the tank stand at max range, so that we could spread the stacks out somewhat. Second mechanic, as you can see, is the kidnapper. Now, he's going to come out, pick someone up, and just fly around with it. It can be slowed, stunned, all that good stuff. The person on the kidnapper can also still cast and interact. So you can kill it yourself. You're then going to get soaring eagles come down and just randomly hit people, as well as potentially a AoE lightning effect, which you would have to stack under. We killed it at a pace where we didn't have to worry about that. Uh, as you can see, the boss literally died in like 45 seconds. Pretty insane, but that's kind of the DPS you're going to be wanting to do through a good chunk of this to make sure that you're comfortably hitting the timer. You don't necessarily need to be hitting that high, but yeah. I'm going to skip these two mobs here by going down. Um, they're normally together, it's just because it's on this server that's desynced. See me struggling to get up the hill, and we're going to go into the next pack then. Now, these axe throwers are actually a nightmare. They literally will stun lock your tank, and it can be quite frustrating. Now, after this pack, we're going to skip the bears on the right, and this next pack at the top is a four pack. You're going to have two axe throwers, I believe, like a normal melee mob, and then a medicine man. The medicine man is going to be CC'd. Now, so we sent the rogue up to CC it. You can have a rogue do this, a mage do this, a hunter trap them. Um, but whatever happens, you need to make sure that they get CC'd. The reason for that is the traps that they come in and drop during the fight. One is a healing ward, which is just annoying. It keeps the mobs relatively well uh, healthy. And one is a protection ward, which literally makes all the mobs invulnerable. So you'll do these separately. It's just easier. You have to spend time killing the wards anyway, so you lose a lot of damage on the other mobs if you try and pull them all together. Get the two bears here, and these are not as scary as the original ZA. The original ZA, you had two tanks. They were using cooldowns on these, and they absolutely melted through tanks. This isn't the case here. You're going to burn through these and get to the top of the stairs, of which you're going to face another four-pack. An axe thrower, two mounted uh, tribesmen's, and then a medicine man. So again, we're going to try and go for a CC. We actually pulled a little bit too quick here and failed the CC. So decided to switch our plan and go straight for the medicine man. This means we need to be quick on the totems. But as you can see, we've got a lot of DPS. We just zoned through it. On to the axe thrower then, as it's the most annoying of the remaining three. Does the stuns, all that good stuff.
Now, going into the boss, the boss has very, very simple mechanics. In his human form, he does a charge. Now, this charge is called Surge. Leaves a debuff on you, increasing the damage taken by subsequent surges. What you want to do is have different players soak the Surge, and they do that by being the furthest player away from the boss. So what we did here is we had the healer take the first one, so we could all pump. I took the second one, but I did it in melee. One, so he doesn't go very far. But two, because then one of the melee can also go out and take the third charge. So I've just moved out to be the furthest person away. I'm going to get charged now. I move in, and just as the next surge is coming out, one of the melees is going to run out and take the last hit, as you can see here. Now, that's pretty much it. He then goes into bear form after three surges, of which he can do things like a bleed, which does a fair bit of damage. Um, but other than that, he just hits hard, really. He doesn't do very many mechanics during this phase. Burn him down, and he's going to fall over. Now, I believe he's actually still in bear form. It's just bugged. He stays in bear form for about 20, 30 seconds, and then he'll start doing surges again. As you can see, the DPS in our group, we just absolutely melted through this. Now, you can see we're not even rescuing the NPCs along the way, and the reason for that is because the time is added as you kill a boss. There's no need to save the NPCs. It just wastes one person's time for 20, 30 seconds. We'd rather just keep on pumping. Now, on these scouts, if they get to the drums that you can see on the left here, they'll summon two reinforcements at a time. You never want to let that happen, ideally. Precast on them, you can pretty much always kill them from range. Next packs, then, we have Flamecasters. Flamecasters have two nasty abilities, or three, actually. First is Combust, where it casts on a random target and any nearby targets and stuns them for a decent duration. He also does a buff on himself that increases his haste by like 500%, and he also does a fireball volley which will hit the entire group. All of these need to be handled and dealt with. It's pretty nasty. Now you see we did a little bit of a skip. We failed it somewhat and pulled the scout, so dealt with that quickly. Next scout dead. We are going to CC on this pack because we've got two flame casters. Now uh, our tank decides we're going to pull it anyway. It's not a problem in this group, but if you are trying to do this with a little bit of a less gear, maybe pulling one flamecaster at a time is a decent shout. As you can see, I got some aggro issues there because the tank was actually combusted. So we're going to move around the corner, and I say, right, let's actually CC the uh, flamecasters here. So we have our rogue go up, sat the back one, pull the rest, and AoE them down. Now, these big mobs do a like earthquake effect on the floor. It's something that can actually be purged off before he hits you with it. It's like on the next melee attack. Something worth doing if your tank's taking a lot of damage, but aside from that, just keep on burning. Going to pull the Flamecaster in, and then we're going to the next boss. Now, this next boss is going to be make or break for your group. Successfully killing this boss is likely to lead to a relatively assured timed run. Um, but it is the boss that has the most likelihood for some level of failure. So let's explain the tactics. The boss is going to do two phases. The first phase is just going to do flame lines along the floor and summon hatches. Now the hatches are going to go down the sides and open these eggs. Normally what you would do is allow one hatcher through at a time, slowly deal with the eggs, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we have a couple of issues here. One, we're actually burning through the boss's health just a little bit too quickly. And two... We literally just, like, we don't want to wait for everything to spawn slowly. We want to do it quick, right? So we let one hatcher through, we go through, but we are going to phase the boss. At about, I believe, 30 35%, he does hatch all eggs. Now, all the eggs will come at once. The hatchlings don't hit very hard themselves, but they do apply a debuff. That debuff increases fire damage taken from any one hit by these mobs. Now you can see I get hit by literally all of them from the other side. Just a lack of organization. And you can see, very, very messy. Lots of dispels onto the tank. I'm waiting to see if it's actually still possible. And I get back up and we keep going. Now in the second phase you can see going on right now, he does four pillars of fire at each of the entrances and he does fire bombs avoid the fire bombs don't land in their explosion and actually we managed to clean up the ads for a messy but viable kill um we're gonna get the res on our dps here our dk here and i mean a road pumped on this fight we did this the other day with uh, a dk tank and we actually just intentionally phased the boss very early we had a hunter misdirect one side of ads to him and the whole thing was so much cleaner um, so Blood DK is definitely one I would recommend for this run for smoothness, I would say. Uh, I would actually potentially run a Blood DK Dispriest 
uh, and then either a hunter, rogue, or mage. Like you want one of those three to be able to do uh, traps and things like that. But you can see we actually ran off here and pulled some trash and, and kept going without our tank. Like completely foolish. There's no reason to do this at all. We try to recover it, but we've got no healer. I've got some aggro. None of us play particularly well. And yeah, I mean, it's just going to be a wipe up. But I mean, this just shows how much time you have in this run. We've come back, we've lost another three, four minutes. We're going through again and we're going to pull these cubs. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, we do later actually aggro this cub that we've just tried to sit, skip with sap. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that speed, it, uh, I mean, there's a nice saying, which is uh, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And that's exactly what you need for ZA. You don't need to be doing 100 million DPS. You don't need to be running at Mac 10. You just need to be smooth through the run and you'll be able to get your time to run pretty easily. Now we're going to do a little bit of a skip here, use the Path of Frost from the DK to run over the water, saves us killing this pack on the left, which is not a particularly nasty pack, but just it, it's extra, right? Now, there are stealth tigers in this area, and I say to our tank, let's go. Just go as quick as we can. They don't actually hit very hard. He's particularly well geared. I can cast while moving, and the other two are melee, so let's just pump into them. And you can see, like, be me being able to keep chain damage onto, like, three or four targets, my damage is just absurd in this area. So it's perfect. We get to move through at a nice, good pace. Now, once all these are dead, we're, like, two or three pulls away from basically finishing the run uh we don't actually go and finish the entire raid uh, the entire dungeon sorry we just came here for the mount and uh yeah you only need to do the first four bosses for that so finish these lynxes up which again they're not particularly bad they just do a bit of damage to the tank now you're going to get two lynxes and two beast tamers now these beast tamers need to be interrupted when they do a cast called domesticate as you can see, our tank's actually just been mind-controlled, and you can see how quickly this could go out of hand. So, nice and quick onto the Beast Tamers. Make sure they die or are interrupted before they do Domesticates. You can see a nice little kick on that one there. And we're going to go into the final boss. My Fire Elemental decided didn't like this pack, but luckily didn't cause us any issues. And, like I said, going into the final, pack, uh, final boss then. So, this boss has changed a little bit from the original TBC. He does... In his human phase, he spawns a totem, which is a water totem, which heals anyone that's in it, including the boss. So what you want to do is have your whole raid group, a whole party group, go and stand in there so that they're getting free healing and everyone else can, uh, the, the tank can move it out. What you'd like to do is have it so that the DPS can stand in the totem but still hit the boss. He then goes into spirit phase where he spawns a lynx, very similar to the TBC encounter. What you can do is, once this lynx fixates on someone, you just go and tank it in the water totem. The final phase here is then the lightning totem that she's spawning right now. If it's left up, it does like chain lightnings through the group, which is quite annoying. He also does like a flame shock, which does a bit of damage. But aside from that, it's pretty much the whole run done. So we get this nice and finished. And uh, yeah, literally, once this is dead, you have to kill this boss before the timer ends. If you haven't killed the boss, you fail. So if you are struggling on DPS, if you are struggling on time, you want to make sure that this boss does die before that timer ends. Otherwise, the cage will burn. Now, like I said, we've skipped all the other cages. The first cage drops a bag of coins, which gives like 40 to 50 gold. The second and third cage gives specific timed reward loot which is actually quite decent. It's stuff that fills a lot of the slots that don't drop from other places in ZA and ZG. And the th fourth one then, if you do it in time, drops the Armani War Bear, which there will be a little clip at the end that just shows how cool this bear looks. It's the same model as TBC, it's just different colorations. And personally, I actually prefer it. So nice and easy, it's dead. You can see there's no more timer at the top. And the person in the cage has piped up and said, hey, rescue me. So we go and rescue them. They're going to walk around for a minute. And yeah, I'm running back for some reason. And you can see the Amani War Bear. There you go. The Amani Battle Bear has just been spawned. So it literally takes like a minute, a minute and a half after the person's release from the cage. Then they'll open an urn. You click the urn and the Amani War Bear's in there. So everyone in the group rolls. I believe it was actually our tank that won it and gave it to our DK because he's a lovely guy. 
And uh, yeah, in one second, there should be a nice little clip of the Battle Bear and just showing you how epic it looks. So hope you guys have enjoyed this. Been a little bit of a fast paced video, although it has actually nearly been 15 minutes. Wow. I'm uh, going to be doing, like I said, lots of heroic guides, all that good stuff in preparation for Cat Classic. So if you do like this sort of stuff, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything you're looking for specifically. Let me know in the comments. I'll add it to my list. Thanks for watching. Catch you later, guys. Bye.